Okay, we're going to talk about the T1 line. So let me get this called up here. And this is a document called Studio to Transmitter Link STL T1 Phone Line PDF document. It's also located in the Google Drive as a regular document. So you don't have to look at the PDF. But you can just minimize me off YouTube. All I'm doing is sitting here talking anyways. And if you open this document, you will see on the left is the studio building. On the right is the transmitter building. And then the black line, the T1 phone line, is approximately 5 miles uh, to the tower through all kinds of amplifiers, connections. It's not a solid line. All those little gray boxes on the side of the road, they route that. Uh, the gray pillars on the side of the road. Anyways, it's showing you a flow diagram of what the T1 does. You'll notice then at the tower site, the T1 actually goes through the WTJR building. There's a card in the WTJR building that uh, receives it, a small card supplied by the phone company. And then it comes out there underground to the WGCA uh, transmitter building. And you'll notice the Harris Intraplex is the black box on either side that makes the T1 work. And then you put the audio into the Interplex and that's what's going on there. Uh, another thing that's going through the T1 is the RDS data, which is what songs on next and so on on the radio. And then the satellite comes back from the tower. So that, that gives you an idea of what's going on with the T1. And there's a lot of descriptions there. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, talking about troubleshooting the T1, it gives you uh, the phone number, uh, report problem. You will need the circuit number and the circuit number should be right on the unit and so should the phone number. Um, also I believe the circuit number is in the Google Drive. I'm surprised it isn't in this document. Uh, that document may have to be revised. Uh, no, it, it's there. It's on the page one. And then it's the AT&T phone number and they also have a, a web uh, place to file a ticket, which I actually had more luck with the last time I had a problem with this. But the thing when the T1 is down is that, okay, it's down. Well, then you got to get backup audio on. Then it could be an hour, five hours, ten hours. You just got to babysit it, and they're bad about calling back and yada, yada, yada. It's just one of those things. It's not fire and forget. And things don't always automatically switch back when the T1 comes back, although you can load the audio switcher at the tower to automatically switch back when the T1 comes back. The only problem with that is when the T1 is not working, they're static on the line. So the automatic switcher thinks the static is WGCA, the radio station, but it's not. It's static. So I have found that I have to go into manual switching from the web stream or the local computer to the T1. And the only real way to do that is to know when the T1's restored or to test it. You can do it remotely or at the tower site, but I've waited for hours at the tower site sometimes when they said it was going to be right away. So it's one of those things. So. Anyways, that pretty much covers the T1, so I just thought I'd run that through a little bit. And uh, any questions, of course, email.